Right, it's uh, 8 o'clock, a very good morning to you. Let's get you up to speed with the news. Mop-up operations are underway in the holiday town of St. Francis Bay in the Eastern Cape. This after a fire destroyed 10 houses in the town yesterday. No one was hurt, but many residents and holidaymakers had to evacuate their homes. For the latest on the situation, let's now cross to SABC reporter Lerato Tipa, and uh, she'll update us on these fires in St. Francis. Lerato, a very good mo morning to you. And uh, as, as we've explained, the fire uh, is out, under control, but it's now up to the residents and the uh, homeowners to assess the damage. Talk to us about what's happened overnight and this morning. Yeah, that's so truly. And you know, when you cover these fire stories, it always uh, seems sensational when you see pictures on social media and you see fires flaring and you get excited thinking, oh my gosh, it's a breaking story. But the aftermath of the story, I think for me personally, is always uh, the interesting part and the sad part when you have to come back a day later after the fires and see the devastation that is caused to people, normal people who are just living their lives, um, going through an ordinary day and then within a few minutes their houses have flared up. And like you can see, I'll just add back up, but as you can see, this house was is one of the houses that was destroyed. Uh, the owner who we talked to shortly said that he literally stepped out for 10 minutes to go to spa and was called later on by his wife saying, no, saying that, no, come back home quickly, something's happening and the house is on fire. And as you can see, they are trying now to pick up the pieces, trying to save old pictures, trying to save what they can of what's left on this house. And I think that's the essence of the story this morning. But joining me this morning, as I said, Leanne, is the owner of the house, Malcolm White, um, who will tell us briefly exactly what happened, the devastation after the fires and the way forward as they try to just pick up the pieces of what's left of their life here in St. Francis. Um, good morning, Malcolm. Tell us briefly exactly what happened um, yesterday when the fires broke out. And um, just obviously, I can't, I can't even ask you how you're feeling yeah. um, and how, how things are currently. Yeah, um, I, as I say, it was around uh, 10 o'clock. I literally left, uh, my house was in perfect condition, we were about to rent it out to holiday makers, um, actually guests from Canada, uh, which is a lot of popular things that the locals do, we actually leave it this time. It, so uh, yeah, we, I literally left for 10 minutes to go down to the spa and um, my wife called me down there, so there's hey, smoke behind the house. On the, on the west side here, directly behind the wind, and the, uh, the wind was 16 odd kilometers an hour, and um, she said go straight to the fire station, which I did. Um, they had already, when I got there, they already dispatched people here. Um, but I shot here and I put water on the west side of our, our thatch roof, just trying to protect it from sparks, but literally the flames within Another 10 minutes were directly over my head and I had to dive in here and tell my, my family to get out. It was that close. Um, we literally ran off with the clothes on our back and uh, computers and um, our, our doggy. <laughs> that is it. And the speculation that the fire was started by people um, who were smoking in a bush nearby, is there any indication um, now as to what started the fire? I know I was speaking to your neighbor, was saying they doesn't think it's like that actually, that probably someone is actually literally starting a fire in nearby residence, yeah. Yeah, you know, I've, I've looked at the uh, visual aerial photographs and uh, videos and it, it, it looks like there were, there were de deliberate spots, not, not more than... 50 meters away um, in, in, in a perfect semicircle directly w in line with the wind so yeah I'm, you know, I'm, I'm obviously painting at the moment but um, I, yeah I, I really think it, it wasn't a natural fire it's, it's, it, it's, with, it's definitely seems as though the indications at this stage is that it was started, it was deliberately started and I don't know who would ever do something like that. And then Malcolm, um, obviously when you arrived you told us not to go inside because it was still quite hot on the, on the bottom. Were you able to save anything? Uh, was the house completely just destroyed? Were you able to save anything, especially valuable stuff for you? Yeah, your it, it's literally, uh, you can see I've got my friends here. I, I mean, uh, literally uh, uh, nothing a, a couple of tools uh, metal spanners we're trying to salvage a bit of aluminium um, stuff but 
Yeah, that's that's it. Yeah, I mean, a couple of gas bottles, which are dangerous, which you want to get rid of. But apart from that, to- to- total devastation. I mean, um, you know. Well, that was um, one of the reasons, Malcolm. Obviously, just just breaking down, like I say, to Leanne, it's absolutely devastating to come to St. Francis and just see just the amount of destruction to this house. Like you were saying earlier on, um, not able to save anything. Um, he got here, um, and the only thing that he has left now are the clothes on, that he has on his thank back. You. And thank you so much, Malcolm. All the, the clothes he has, and managed to save his dog as well. Um, also, stunned by the fact that he says that he saw uh, CCTV footage that shows that perhaps this fire was deliberate. It wasn't an accident. It wasn't. Uh, a fire that was just started um, by natural natural um, effects. Um, so obviously he's quite sad. As you see, he just walked out from the shot and all very, very, very emotional. Um, he says that this was their home that they used to lease out during holiday times and um, now they can't do that and they have to now try pick up the pieces um, for what's left of this home. But for now, uh, it's back to you in studio.